Happy Father's Day! Today we are going to explore the economics and data behind fatherhood and how it affects society going forward. There has been an increase in the number of single parent homes in the West, but I chose to focus on fatherhood as most absentee parents are fathers. In the present day, according to an NCBI sample, 24.1% of fathers live away from one or more children. This was provided to me by the lovable centrist Layman, whose YouTube channel and Twitter are linked below, so please check it out. This can be attributed to the high out of wedlock birth rates, with more millennials than boomers having a baby first before marriage. This is interesting, as 86% of millennials who do marry first before having kids end up in the upper or middle income distribution. The same cannot be said for millennials who had a baby before marriage, where 47% of them became poor, and poverty doesn't seem to be a blockade to benefiting from marriage. 71% of millennials who marry first and growing up in the bottom third of the income distribution achieved upper or middle income status later in life. Now, there has been scepticism on the effectiveness of marriage when many stating education and work status are the real factors driving success. After all, 97% of millennials who follow all three steps of marriage, full-time work and high school education are not poor by the time they are 28 years old, and 94% of low-income individuals who follow all steps are not in poverty. But when controlling for various background factors, marrying before having kids still doubles a person's chance of achieving middle or upper income status. This is because marriage isn't just a piece of paper, there's a contract that encourages couples to stay together long term, allowing them to combine their resources. This contractual agreement leads to family stability and encourages couples to be more financially stable before having children, not to mention the couple can use economies of scale. Economies of scale is when businesses increasing in size or output leads to a fall in average costs in the long run. And in our case, this manifests through housing. A house is a heavy expenditure, especially for one person living there, but when another person lives with them, particularly through marriage, they can combine their income to pay for housing, and the cost of housing does not change with each additional person living there. Marriage also discourages infidelity. When a person has more than one partner and the possibility of multiple children, there is less income to spend for each partner and their respective children. They might even choose one family over another, depriving the other family of vital income and a parent. Fathers also need to be engaged, as this makes their children more likely to have higher IQs, better relationships, avoid high-risk behaviours and delay sex, and less likely to drop out of school and be in jail. In addition, fathers need to be actively involved, attend their kids' important events, and be warm. But what was surprising was that fathers who binge drink before conception increases their kids' chance of congenital heart disease and alcohol abuse, and their poor dietary choices increases negative pregnancy outcomes. Disengaged fathers, or lack of them, also have effects that differ by gender. Boys lean on fathers for their social skills, so they tend to be less popular in school if they lack a father and girls take more sexual risks if they don't have a strong relationship with their dad, particularly if they are cold to them. Fathers also need to take note that their children are always watching them and that their behaviour matters. Moreover, single parent homes are poorer and must manage financial support with being the sole carer of their kids. This leads to single parents being less emotionally supportive and have fewer rules but deal harsher penalties. However, marriage and the behaviours of fathers aren't the only ingredients for a successful childhood. Children with parents that argue a lot have lower grades, worse psychological problems, and more likely to form families outside of marriage. This doesn't seem to be explained by income. Parents need to apply consistent discipline and respond firmly but warmly to children. But if they keep on arguing with each other, they will enact harsher discipline and will be unable to cooperate with each other on decisions pertaining to their children. And while I am the first to discourage and badmouth divorce, it stems from pre-divorce conflict and that divorce may actually bring relief to the stress of high conflict family environments. So if we want to avoid divorces, we need to find ways to foster environments of low conflict parents. There are of course those who automatically attribute all of this to income and class, which is true in the sense that lower incomes lead to higher out of wedlock births and early cohabitation but higher incomes have actually been correlated with higher marijuana and alcohol use. This is because higher incomes increase the ability of youths to purchase alcohol and drugs. Overall, there are many things that society needs to do to maximise the benefits of parenthood, such as marrying before having kids, decreasing conflict in parents, engaging with kids, having a warm attitude and more. 
Anyway, sources are in the description and thank you for 100 subscribers. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give a like and comment as it really helps my video in the YouTube algorithm. And if you like economics and political commentary, consider subscribing. Maybe follow me on my Twitter and see you later.